All right, uh, dear students. In the first part, we had discussed uh, three or four aspects relating to district planning committee. One, we discussed, uh, we discussed the concept and meaning of the decentralized planning. Then we discussed the constitutional provisions relating to the mechanism for decentralized planning, that is the district planning committee. Then we explained uh, some uh, functions of the district planning committee and uh, after the discussion on functions and composition of the district planning committee, we also had a reference to the status of the district planning committee in different states. And uh, while we were discussing the status of the district planning uh, committees in the states, in fact, we came across the facts that uh, they are still, though 74th Amendment of the Constitution has been accepted by all the states uh, and the union territories of the country without any exception. The importance of decentralized planning and district planning committee has also been uh, recognized by one and all insofar as the politicians and the policy makers and administrators are concerned. Even those who believe that democratic decentralization will remain meaningful only if the district planning committees are strengthened. But at the same time, when we were going through the uh, models and the status of the district planning committee, we found that still the district planning committee committees are faced with uh, a number of uh, challenges and issues in the country. We, we believe, we find that even today, though formally, structurally, or constitutionally, legally, the uh, district planning committees have been accepted, but is still the effective uh, functioning of the district planning committees are not without any kind of hindrances. That even today, they face a number of issues. And if we enlist, if we list those issues with which uh, the district planning committees are faced with today, then we come uh, a number of issues. And I think the first issue uh, that we come across regarding the district planning committees and their functioning and their efficacy is that many states uh, uh, have still, even today, have not taken concrete steps to establish and constitute the district planning committees. For example, some states like Goa, Sikkim, Tirpura, Jharkhand, they have not really established uh, the district planning committees. And uh, if we go through the reasons, there are some states which explain that they are very small states and therefore the constitution of district planning committee at the grassroots level is neither desirable nor it is uh, feasible. For example, the state of Goa and Sikkim have taken this stance that uh, they are very small states and therefore the unit of planning itself, even if it is state level, uh, unit of planning, it will take care, it is easier to take into consideration the local needs and the local resources. The assessment of the local resources is possible even through the, the planning uh, committees at the higher levels, that is the level of the state. So this is one kind of a hindrance or you can say uh, one of the stumbling blocks is that uh, some of the states who have not taken the steps to constitute district planning committees, whatever the reason and explanation, must take steps to organize and, uh, and establish the district planning committee. The second issue that is still very uh, relevant and very important for the effective functioning of the district planning committee is the issue of uh, the funds. And uh, in fact, uh, the third issue is the politicization of the, uh, of the uh, district planning committees. Now you, uh, you will agree perhaps with me that even if you give certain uh, functions and uh, role in decision making to the grassroots level institutions like Panchayat, Gram Panchayat or the uh, Gram Sabha or the Panchayat Samiti or the Jila Panchayat, now they, they will remain merely the distant dreams until unless they are also given adequate funds to fund the programs or the priorities they have decided or the, the policies they have uh, undertaken. So adequate funds must be devolved onto 
the panchayati raj institutions and the district planning committees only if they have already allocated funds they can take view whether uh, this program or that program should be undertaken or not or what should be the priorities for uh, them though uh, some states have make have made some kind of a progress uh, in allocation of funds for example 41% of the state budgets uh, have been allocated in several states for meant for the uh, district uh, plans and therefore district planning committee and the other organs of that process of decentralized planning can be in a position to take a holistic and integral view of the development as a whole so therefore even now the district uh, planning uh, committee as well as the uh, panchayati raj institutions are falling short of the the uh, financial support from the state as well as from the uh, central government so therefore there's a need to uh, take this factor into account if we want to make the district planning committee efficacious if we want to make the district planning mechanisms so effective and really responsive to the development needs in fact if we look at uh, the factors that are still impeding the progress of the district planning decentralized planning and district planning is that there is some kind of a politicization of the uh, planning process and uh, the district planning committees now this politicization can be very much evident into two factors one that in many cases the ministers are the chairpersons or mayors are the uh, chairpersons of the district planning committee and these are the political beings so therefore sometimes there can be some political domination rather than having a realistic financial or developmental orientation to uh, planning it could be more political orientation to the planning process and we also find that uh, in some cases even the district collector has been made the uh, Uh, chairperson of the district planning committee so therefore some people say that the uh, appointment of the district collectors as the chairperson is an attempt to depoliticize or keep the district planning uh, out of the political kind of influences but this is one of the criticisms of uh, the composition of the district planning committees where politicization is uh, said to be one of the challenges before uh, uh, the uh, district planning committees the other uh, issue that faces the district planning and the district planning committees is the lack of adequate technical expertise with the members of the district planning committee and in fact uh, this has been a factor for quite long as uh, the members of the district planning committee in fact are not properly trained particularly the those who who are elected members of the planning committee they are not really very much apt in data collection in data analysis and data understanding and the interpretation uh, social and economic of the needs of that uh, uh, data so therefore sometimes uh, though there is a provision for consultation with expertise available outside the district planning committees or some experts can be made members have been made in fact members of the district planning committee because in in some states for example the uh, country and town planner is a member of the uh, district planning committee in some others uh, expertise in statistics is a part of uh, the district planning committee so some steps have been taken but it's still the it's a very complex kind of a process and therefore the district planning needs to be made more uh, simple to understand to the local people and in fact there has to be some kind of a linkage another problem uh, which we have uh, come across relating to district planning is that the linkages forward and backward in the planning process are still missing when we talked about decentralized planning and uh, the role of the uh, district planning committee was to in fact uh, coordinate between the plans at the grassroots level the village level the panchayat level uh, at the block and the district panchayat with the plan of the state it means that the district plan must be prepared keeping in mind the uh, the plans prepared by the panchayati raj institutions at every level it was expected that the village gram sabha shall in fact decide the priorities and the uh, programs and thereafter the gram panchayat shall prepare a draft after discussion with the uh, that come across the gram sabha and 
they will then prepare a draft of the uh, village uh, plan and these village plans will then be taken into account by the block panchayat samiti and they will discuss the requirements of every gram panchayat and they then the panchayat samiti shall prepare a consolidated in fact plan and keeping in mind the overall needs of the uh, block development need of the blocks and then the this plan of the panchayat samiti will be submitted to the district uh, you know the panchayat and the district panchayat will consolidate these uh, plans and then the district planning committee in fact will take into account the uh, plans received from the panchayat uh, samiti and the gram panchayat and also the plans uh, received from uh, the municipalities and they will consolidate then these plans into one uh, draft plan for the entire district and this plan will then be submitted to the state government for being taken into uh, into the structure of the state plan and allocation of funds accordingly so therefore is it happening this is the question what is in fact happening is that some states have really done very well for example if we take kolam model uh, then kolam model in fact is taken as one of the best models for uh, the village panchayat level planning and the panchayat samiti uh, level planning because it is the gram sabha which discusses the issues for quite in detail and after discussing the matters of uh, social and economic development including the education and health uh, primary level they then consolidate those discussions into the real plan of the village the gram panchayat then then consolidates and uh, reflects the views of the uh, gram sabha and that is why many people have said that kolam model should be adopted for, uh, for preparing the development plans of the villages almost and across the country but anyway the point which i am trying to say is that gram sabha is still has not really uh, got its due place and role in the uh, preparation of the village plan uh, at the grassroots level so this is another how to really involve the people because the expectation was that gram sabha and the gram panchayat will collect the data about the resources natural resources are available then economic resources are available then human resources are available what is the quantum and what is the nature what is the competence of these resources human financial uh, natural physical and until unless they really identify these resources and then prepare the plans programs activities uh, accordingly the plan would not have any kind of a real uh, meaning at the grassroots level so there's a need to develop that expertise and that un understanding and for that purpose i would suggest that the gram panchayat and the gram sabha members must be made aware of the general objectives of the uh, decentralized planning they must be made aware of the methods of preparation of, uh, of the uh, village plan and they must also be made aware of their responsibility of mobilizing and utilizing the locally available resources for example water is a natural resource for example the solar energy is a natural resource and uh, the land is a natural resource so therefore how can really be these resources be harnessed with the common goals of uh, development and that can come only through not only awareness of the objectives but also the kind of ownership how should they own the plan and many a time we find that even human resources can be used uh, to reduce the cost for example if a school building has to be constructed or some repair in the school has to take place the state government may allocate certain resources funds for the repair and reconstruction of the buildings of the school but it is possible that the funds that are being allocated by the state government may not be enough for the reconstruction or renovation of the school building so in that case the gram panchayat or must be aware that it is the human contribution uh, the, the contribution of the human resources at the gram level the panchayat level which can contribute to the remaining kind of cost of the repair of that building so therefore that can happen easily if the people develop a sense of belonging 
that we, this is our work, this is our uh, uh, baby, this is our child, and nobody else will come to the development and growth of the child except they. So there, the others can be supportive elements, others can be some kind of a, a status. So this is one uh, kind of a challenge of funds and uh, also the lack of competency. We have to do a capacity building program for the Panchayat Samiti and the Jila Panchayat as well. Until unless we make this uh, competency building a reality, perhaps the aims and objectives of the decentralized planning may not be achieved. In conclusion, what we can say is uh, that district planning committee is a mixed uh, experience in the country. There are some states like Karnataka, there are some states like Andhra Pradesh, there are some states like West Bengal, there are some states like Kerala. Even to some extent we can say that in, in Rajasthan and Uttar Pradesh, planning process is working quite efficiently. The kind of a conclusion that we can draw is that wherever the Panchayati Raj institutions are strong, where Panchayati Raj institutions have been given powers, some kind of autonomy to take decisions, the decentralized planning and district planning committees have been doing reasonably well. But where the Panchayati Raj institutions are not that strong or in a way you can say where Panchayati Raj institutions are weak, the decentralized planning and district planning committees are also not that effective or you can say they are also in a way non-functional. Another point that I would say is that now uh, we have seen a sea change in the national level planning uh, system or development system if I can say because there is no uh, planning commission now. The planning commission uh, has been abolished and a new institution has come into existence which we call Niti Aayog. So therefore it is necessary that Niti Aayog pays a special attention to the district planning committees what exactly is the view of the uh, Niti Aayog and how can it really revive, it can play a, a very effective role in the revival of the district planning committees which in fact are basically in a state of suspension if I can use that word and if it has to be revived the Niti Aayog must give clear directions about this. Thank you.